Hello everyone, I hope you have had a nice summer. I'm Dr. Sane E. I will be your instructor for ME 467, the lecture component. So this course has two components, the lecture and the lab components. The lecture component will be taught by me and the lab component will be taught by Professor Johnson. So make sure you don't confuse the two. There are gonna be two different syllabi, uh, course policy, homeworks, quizzes, uh, so it would be a different setting for, for each component. Um, I'm going to go over syllabus today. So my email is my last name at psu.edu. I have office hours in Zoom on Tuesdays and Thursdays, 11 to 12.30 p.m. If you can't make it during those times, you can send me an email and we'll schedule a convenient time that works uh, for both of us. The prereq for this class is ME349 or Intermediate Mechanics as Material and also MATLAB programming. So whether you like or dislike MATLAB, uh, there is going to be an it's going to be an integral part of uh, this course. So if you're rusty on MATLAB, make sure you give yourself time to uh, practice and bring yourself speed in terms of uh, MATLAB programming. And I will try to baby step you in, into MATLAB. The first homework is going to be very simple, straightforward. The second homework is going to build upon that. But by the third and fourth homework, then you need to really be ready and be comfortable uh, using MATLAB because we really don't have time to, to teach MATLAB. I assume that you know it. Uh, so if, if you have forgotten, if uh, you never learned it well, well, that's okay. Just make sure you, you catch up. The required textbook is a textbook uh, by Said Moaveni. And um, the newest edition is fifth edition. You don't have to buy the newest edition. I have the third edition and there is not much difference between uh, the editions. Uh, so you could buy any edition that you find. It doesn't have to be new. You can use you, you can buy used. You can get the electronic version, but make sure to have this book so that it would go along with with our lecture. And there are some other suggested texts that I recommend that you, that you buy these or find an online version, uh, so you would have it. That would aid you in uh, completing your homework. So the grading policy, this course has 20% of the to your total grade, and that would be divided between homework and quizzes. Uh, then I put 2% for instructor evaluation, which I usually use it for class participation. I mean, it's an online class, it's a asynchronous class, so participation would include your uh, participation in answering questions posted on Canvas in a discussion format. Um, most of your homeworks are going to be with MATLAB again. So we're going to use MATLAB uh, to develop our own FEA code, as opposed to the lab component, which you use ANSYS all the time. We are going to use MATLAB all the time. And there is no way we could solve problems using hand calculations. It's just uh, too much. I mean, each element is Gonna the stiffness metric for each element could be eight by eight, and uh, as you add elements, then the stiffness metric gets larger. So for a model with thousand uh, elements, your matrices that you have to deal with are thousands in order of thousands. So we have to use MATLAB for our uh, matrix manipulation. And MATLAB is, is is great for that. I mean, MATLAB name is Matrix Lab. So it's built based on matrices. And these are a couple of policies that I'm, I'm just including here. The course objective that you could go through it. For homeworks, again, most of them are going to be in MATLAB. You're going to upload your MATLAB file, which is the M file on Canvas. And I'm going to run your code. If your code doesn't run, you will use uh, the majority of the point. You need to make sure that your code runs and then uh, upload it on Canvas by the due date. Quizzes are going to be on Canvas. Usually I like to have a question bank and um, with randomization of the questions and of the order of the questions and the order of the, the choices that you have. Uh, disability statement, academic honesty is very important and it becomes more pronounced that now we are dealing with online so we don't have 
as much proctoring as uh, uh, we used to during in-person classes. So to ensure integrity, uh, you need to follow the academic honesty code. And academic honesty is the only thing that you're not going to get a warning if you don't do well in the quiz, if you're late in homework. I will send you an email, we can talk about it. Academic honesty, there is no talking, there is no warning. If I see something, I'll report it directly. To academic affair committee, and there would be a hearing, and uh, uh, the consequence could be failure of the course, suspension, termination of program, depending on, of course, what, uh, what you've done. Uh, then uh, some other policies, and then we are going to go to the topics. So here I'm listing a tentative list of topics that we're going to cover in this course. So looking through the topics, you should be able to notice that there is no one-to-one -one correlation between the lab and the lecture component. Because FEA is um, it's not a straightforward procedure, so it's just a little bit challenging. It's usually uh, taught at graduate level class. So we need some foundation. That tensor algebra and index notation would be our foundation to develop our own finite element uh, code. Then we go on uh, to introduction of the procedure, talk about what we need to do to solve problems. And then we introduce shape functions, different types of shape function and uh, elements and then the energy method for developing the stiffness matrices. Then we move to elements. So it's just, it takes half the semester. So we move to like truss elements or beam elements that are, look like a line. But in the lab, probably you deal with the 3D elements, right? The first uh, lab. Uh, so for us, we need to build a foundation. And the theory part is very important. At times, it looks like a lot of equation, a lot of derivation that you might think that, oh, we don't need that. But you need to that need to have that background knowledge of FEA. Otherwise, you would be a technician that just uses the FEA stuff. Otherwise, we're not teaching ANSYS in this class. We are teaching FEA. So you need to know the background concept of it so you have a better knowledge of what's going on. Otherwise, you could go and enroll in a workshop and in a week they teach you how to use ANSYS uh, without the background. But this class involves both components. So you would be uh, have an engineering knowledge and judgment when it comes to FEA to see what it makes sense and what it does and how we should model it, what each assumption means for us. And I brought here again for the MATLAB issue because if you are not uh, competent in MATLAB really can make progress in, in this course and you would fall behind because homeworks are getting uh, cha challenging and more challenging. Again, this is a graduate level course. I'm not going to dumb it down. It's, it's just the nature of the course. If I really want to teach FEA, I have to teach all, all the procedures. Uh, so we need to uh, speed up pretty fast. I will start with a very basic homework of matrices so you could uh, get familiar with MATLAB. And now, before even I post the first homework, uh, you could make sure that you have access to MATLAB. I mean, it's a virtual class, it's a remote class, so whether you're going to use VPN, whether you're going to use uh, remotely connect to a uh, computer lab, uh, whether you're going to install it on your computer and buy the license, the first step to make sure that you could have access to, to MATLAB before uh, we, we go into uh, assignments. Uh, I don't have anything else to say. I will post, you can see that now we are using a YouTube format platform for, for our delivery of courses. It's is a strong, it gives me statistics of how many people have watched, how long you have watched the videos, and at which minute the students stop watching the videos. So we are going to use that one uh, for, for our communication of the videos. Uh, and I will try to make the videos short so they won't be boring, but uh, you need to apply your own disciplines. You need to make sure you wake up like at 8 a.m., watch the video, like have a paper and um, pen ready, take notes, pause the video, solve the problem yourself, uh, rewatch the videos. Don't treat it like random clips that you, you see on videos while you're lying down on your couch. You're not going to learn. I mean, 
it's your responsibility to learn. I mean, five years from now, when you are going to the task force, um, nobody's going to say whether you had online class or in person or whether it was synchronous, asynchronous, your instructor was good or was not. Uh, you need to know it. You, you just need to be confident to uh, express your engineering judgment at, at a design. And so make sure that you have some disciplines in, in following up with, with the lectures and the material. Uh, I think I've covered everything that I wanted to say. If you have any questions or there's something that is not clear, uh, please let me know. Send me an email. I will try to get back to you as, as soon as uh, uh, I can.